are tying a Griffith's gnat. This is a um, really good dry fly. This is for our beginner fly tying box. You can see here there's a lot of little variations of this fly. We're just going to tie the standard Griffith's gnat here, but you can put little poly wings on there. We could use purple dubbing, whatever color dubbing, or a thread body like this orange asher style, or maybe a little CDC on the top there. So this is a very good dry fly for trout. Uh, it's really fun to catch bluegill on top, especially during the winter months when maybe there's not a lot of bug hatches, but primarily midge hatches. So this is a good one to, to start, especially if you're just starting out tying dry fly. So I'm using a number 16 hook here, a dot thread, and I'll just attach my thread to the hook there and lay down a simple thread base and we'll take our thread back to our tie-in point. Refer to that directly above the barb of the hook. And that's where we'll tie in our hackle. All right, so what I have here, this is a um, whiting um, grizzly saddle hackle. This is a long piece. One of these feathers will tie about 10 to 12 flies. So it's really good stuff. And you wanna make sure when you're tying dry flies that you size the hackle properly so it matches the size of your hook. So what I like to do is uh, just make a loop there of my hackle and then I can press it up against the barb there and I can eyeball and see the length of the barbs and I want to make sure they extend just past the hook gap which is the space between the, the shank and the point of the hook there. You don't want to tie in a feather that's way long down into there otherwise that won't float very good. It tends to tip on its nose and things like that. So once I have that, uh, got the right feather, and I've already pre-selected a lot of these hackles personally for you and for our, our, monthly, our monthly box. What I'm gonna do is just take this feather and strip a stem there, and this is the uh, top part of the feather, and this would be the underside of the feather, and that's important. This tends to be shiny, that tends to be a little more dull colored, and then as we turn this, as you can see, those barbs will angle down towards the underside of the feather there. So what I want to do is tie this in so the top of the feather is facing me. And we'll just secure that in carefully. If you need to, you can take your stem on an angle like that and then as you come around carefully, you can grab that stem and secure that in. Let's, let's tie that in just going forward a ways. And let's actually bring our thread forward. Now we're going to use Peacock. I've got two strands of peacock feathers here. You can use one if you'd like. Um, you could use three, four if you'd like, depending on how thick you'd like the body. I like to use one, but this particular feather the, was a little sparse, so I'm going to use two together just to give me a little more meat there in the body. All right, now I just lay those on top, and I'm going to tie those down all the way back to our tie-in point where we tied in the hackle feather. And then let's return our thread right back to the eye of the hook. And now I can begin wrapping these together. Now if I have two of these, I like to just take a couple twists there and twist those together. Then they'll stay together a little better, just better. Just be careful not to ding the point of your hook there because that will snap that. That's the problem with Peacock is it tends to be a little brittle and can break easily. But there's something about peacock that catches fish. All right, to tie that in, I just hold that straight up in the air. Now with my left hand, I'll drop my thread over about three times. And then I can come in here with my scissors. I'm trying to be careful not to crowd the head there with all these excess materials. One thing I like to do with peacock, though, to keep it from splitting or breaking on fish is just take your thread now and make a few wide spiral wraps and you don't even really notice that I've done that but it sure makes that body a lot more durable. Now let's take our hackle feather and we'll wrap that over the top away from us and just being really careful to wrap that neatly through that peacock and once we reach just behind the eye, we'll repeat that as far as um, holding that feather straight up in the air and dropping our thread over with our left hand 
about three times. And holding that straight up in the air, we can come in here and snip our hackle feather. Okay, now I can come in here if I need to and just make a few nice neat wraps, pull back any of those hackles that are in the way and build a nice little neat head there. And now I can do my whip finish without capturing any of those hackle barbs. Thank you.